In this video, I'm going to explain how I set up a mouse excel curve for Zexro, a Valorant Pro for Dark Zero, and I'll explain my logic as I show each setting. After getting a lot of requests, I decided to develop a method for creating excel curves that should help you figure out what settings you want to use when you start playing on excel, and I don't think there's any other videos like this. I will explain some of the logic on why I use each setting, but if you want to go really in depth on why mouse excel works so well for TAC FPS games like Valorant, CSGO, and Rainbow Six Siege, check out the video in the top right. First, you obviously need to download Raw Excel. There's a link to the GitHub in the description, but you also need some kind of screen recording software. For this video, I'm gonna use OBS. Open Raw Excel and set your DPI to around three or four times your actual DPI. All this does is scale the x-axis so that you can actually see what your curve looks like and it doesn't affect the function of the program at all. Next, you wanna set your DPI to like 1600 or 3200 or if your mouse can handle it, you can go even higher. Basically, the way Excel measures your mouse speed is by taking the amount of dots your mouse sensor reports and dividing that by the time since the last report in milliseconds. So if your DPI is low, then you won't get an accurate read of your speed, which means your sense will be off. On most Excel curves, for most targets, this won't really make a difference past 16 or 3200 DPI, but if you want to go higher, that's fine. That being said, the difference is small enough that if your mouse can only handle 800 DPI or something, it's not the end of the world. I used 1000 DPI out of laziness until I worked with Zexero and finally decided to make a curve on 3200. In order to make your new DPI feel fine, when you're moving your cursor, you can simply change your sense multiplier to your old DPI divided by your new one, and your DPI will feel the same on the bottom of your curve, and it'll be fine navigating your desktop. On a side note about sense multiplier, if you're a Siege player who just wants to run a sense between the two whole number sensitivities that you're forced to run, so that you don't have to run like one out of five viable sensitivities, you can just turn on Roxel and change your sense multiplier and put on any sense you want. From there, you don't even have to use the actual acceleration, but you can use it. But if your goal is just to get a weird sense in Siege, then you can just stop here. From here, most people tell you to just turn Excel on and play around with it, which is really good advice. I've given it in the past. However, as I said, I've developed a method for making specific types of TAC FPS curves. Excel is personal, but these curves can work really well for me and other people. If you try this technique and it doesn't work great for you, that's fine. Noted, another Valorant rating and I work with uses a curve that looks like this and goes from 21 centimeters per 360 to 6 centimeters per 360. While I don't love his curve, for some reason he seems to perform his best on it, being able to hit really cool clips and also the red subscribe button below this video. Prove your like noted and click that button as well. So now what you want to do is open up Roxol on the DPI you're planning on making the curve on, have the DPI setting around three to four times that number, and then open up OBS and set up a window capture so that it is recording the raw Excel in like the top right third of your screen. Open up Kovex or AimLab and then set up a display capture to show your aim trainer. If your raw Excel is in the window correctly, it shouldn't be coming close to your crosshair. You should be able to see your crosshair and the targets near it but you should also be able to clearly see the graph. This allows you to see how fast you are moving your mouse. Start recording and play through the playlist in the description. Once you finish this playlist, open up the VOD and try and review your speeds. If you need to play it back frame by frame, that's fine. On scenarios like Passio Extra Small Horizontal or WPV Multi Peak Ascent, watch how quickly you are moving when you are close to the target. On the example from Zexro, this speed is around 12 to 15 counts per millisecond. Whatever the speed is for you, just write it down. In my last Excel video, I explained this in a lot greater detail, but basically if you have your sense accelerating while you're approaching a counter strafing enemy you run the risk of having the excel serve the opposite of the purpose and make it feel like the enemy is smaller instead of making the enemy feel bigger and the distance between them feel smaller depending on how low your base sense is and how high your acceleration rates are this may not be an issue but i found it to be pretty annoying I believe most CS pros who use Excel have no offset available to them, and no one is telling Zentaras he can't aim as far as I know, so I wouldn't be too worried if you can't get an offset to work for you. Now for this video, I recommend you use Classic, but you can also use Linear and follow the same steps. Classic is basically just a graph of the curve where it's x to the power of a certain power, p, where the domain of x will always be greater than zero because mouse speed is a scalar and that is what acceleration measures. Because of the way calculus works, an exponent of 2 is actually just a straight line, so for your classic curve to not default to linear in newer versions of Roxel, you have to make sure that you set the exponent to something that isn't 2 before hitting apply. 
If you know calculus, then this should instantly make sense, and if you don't, it would take me way too long to explain why this is the case, and understanding this is completely unnecessary to learn how to use Excel. What you have to understand is that the power can be 2, it can be 2.1, it can be 100, it can be literally whatever, and it will cause your curve to stay relatively flat, then begin to accelerate, and then accelerate continuously faster. What this does is it allows you to have a smooth transition between the offset and the actual acceleration part of your curve. For the most part, the higher the power, the longer it'll stay flat, and the quicker it'll accelerate when it does. By default, I'd recommend using a number somewhere between 2.5 and 4. If you want me to tell you exactly what to run, just do 3. That's a very generic number for classic curves and then just change it if you think something else would feel better And now what I want you to do is look at the number I had you write down before Look at the flat part of your classic curve and figure out how long it stays relatively flat for if your power is 3 This will be about 10 counts per millisecond Subtract this number from the number I had you write down before and in Zexor's case This would have resulted in 2 to 5 counts per millisecond as a result that number is your offset in Zexor's case, we found he ended up aiming more carefully and slowly in Kovacs than he was in game, and this resulted in us needing to almost double his offset and affect his power a bit too, so that his curve would stay flat for roughly twice as long. If you want to prevent this issue for yourself, just record yourself playing a deathmatch with the Excel curve in the top right, and play back any encounters you add with counter-strafing enemies. If you find you go up 6 counts per millisecond past the flat part of your curve, increase your offset by 6. Next, what you want to do is figure out where you want your mouse Excel to cap at. A lot of times I find guides focusing on what sense people want to cap at, and I say instead focus on what speed you cap at. If your high sense is between 1.5 and 2 times your current sense, it's probably pretty good and you don't really need it to be that exact. So to cap off a certain speed, you have to use cap type input. To get a good input cap, watch yourself aim at targets on a Vox TS VOD and look at what the speed you move at is. When you're making this VOD, try to hit a flick speed you had hit when flicking between targets in Valorant. If you want more data, you can also play 1 while 4 targets Voltaic. I'd recommend taking whatever speed you hit pretty consistently when flicking and cap at 80% of that. For Zexro, that was about 80 counts per millisecond. As I said, you probably want your cap to be between 1.5 and 2 times your current sense. If it's less than that, the Excel isn't doing much. If it's more than that, the Excel will feel uncomfortable or unpredictable in my opinion. But again, if a cap at 1.2 or 3 times your current sense is feeling really good, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. I just find most people like to be within the 1.5 to 2x range. For the acceleration setting, you're going to just have to play around with it, but I'll tell you how to do that. Start with an acceleration rate that causes your input cap x value to have a y value that's as close to 1.7 as you can. If you have gain on, then the 1.7 value will likely mean that your sense will go way past 1.7 after the cap, so instead focus on making the sensitivities you'll reach towards your maximum speeds be around 1.7. Play a couple scenarios and adjust the acceleration afterwards. After a bit of time, if you feel it should accelerate faster, raise the acceleration. If you feel like it should accelerate more slowly, lower it. To the 15 of you prepared to comment, how do I know what I feel? Just trial and error sometimes is all it takes. Now, the last setting we haven't gone over is whether or not to turn on gain. And in this case, it's completely personal preference. Gain on means that it'll continue to accelerate at a slower rate past your cap, basically just making the curve a bit smoother, and gain off means Means that you'll hold one flat sensitivity at your cap. Whatever feeling you prefer, just pick it. I really don't think it makes a huge difference, though I prefer gain on. So if you want a quick recap, watch VODs of your dynamic clicking and figure out how long your offset should be, then set up the power on a classic curve in the actual offset setting to make that offset number your offset. Verify this with counter strafing enemies in a Valorant DM. Put an input cap to stop your acceleration from getting too high and uncontrollable at 80% of your average maximum speed between targets, and try to have the acceleration cap around 1.7 to start, and then play around with it. Gain is preference. If your curve looks absolutely nothing like this advice, that is fine. This is just the starting point that I've been getting so many requests for. If you want to understand why Excel works, check out this video on why Radiance Love Mouse Excel for Valorant, and if you want more aim guides, subscribe. Thanks for watching.